My name is Dee Stein, I'm 53 years old, and I'm from Las Vegas. I have two bowling balls on my chest, my breasts. Half the way together, about 30 pounds. I got into dancing because I was a single mom and I needed to keep food on the table. My very first boob job, I think I went to a triple F. They were like 550, 600 cc implants. 550 or 600 cc's is a big implant. In my practice, the average sizes that we use are between 300 and 400 cc's. And it's kind of like a bell curve. Well, 550 to 600 is way on the other end. Those are very big implants. The largest silicone implants that are being manufactured in the United States are 800 cc. So you're not quite there, but you're getting up there. My second boob job, the doctor brought me up to an H cup. 1,500 cc's. 1,500 cc's? That is insane. Now, each of those implants weighs about three and a half pounds, so you're literally adding seven pounds of weight to this woman's body. After the second boob job, I had tissue expanders put in to be able to get to 3,000 cc's. 3,000 cc's? Now you're talking about literally like, what, 13 to 14 pounds of breasts? How do you get them so big? This is nothing that we learn in residency, that's for sure. But now, I have one breast that's halfway deflated. We're not sure whether there's anything leaking into my body right now. My other breast that's encapsulated, it hurts and it's very uncomfortable. You can't even move this breast, it just sits. It is like rock. When she says it's encapsulated, that means that the scar tissue around the implant, now every implant has scar tissue around it, has gotten thick. Now the capsule can be anything from tissue paper thin and super soft to thick and like the shell of an egg. And when you're dealing with an implant that huge, that is a ton of scar tissue to deal with. These are under a lot of pressure. The good news with this one, honestly, is the fact that it ruptured mm -hmm. and some of the pressure for a significant period of time has off. been taken off. Okay. That's helpful. Okay. This one is, you know, look at the veins, how distended they are. It's gonna find its way out Ow. one way mm -hmm. or another. So the problem is, is when you have breast implants, studies do show that the subcutaneous tissue and the breast tissue tends to thin uh, around those implants. And so as the years go by, your tissue gets thinner and thinner. You combine that with a massive heavy implant like what she has, and I would guess that that process is going to go much more quickly. Well, at some point, the tissue gets so thin that the implant can literally tear through that tissue, and now you've got a massive, massive problem. The risks of losing the nipple, of losing skin, when you take these out and lift them, are based on two distinct variables. Variable one is the thickness of the tissue, and variable two is the distance for which you want to raise the nipple up. On a risk scale, right. she is through the roof, okay. okay? I agree with everything that Dr. Debro says here. The issue that she has is her tissues are super thin. And whenever we do a breast lift, one of the big things that we usually do is bring the nipple up into a higher position. And whenever we do that, we have to cut at least some around the nipple to move it. Well, any bit of cutting around a nipple like hers where the tissue is so thin can cut off the blood supply to the point where the nipple turns black and it dies. It's one thing if you have some tissue from the side of the breast, some skin from a different part of the breast that doesn't survive and maybe scars in, it's another thing if your nipple falls off. For the first part of Dee's surgery, I need to carefully remove her 3,000 cc implants without rupturing their saline or silicone cores. I'll then make incisions in her breast tissue, which will supercharge her blood supply and cause her skin to contract so that I can put in implants at a later time. I do a lot of corrective breast surgery in my practice where people have implants from another doctor, they have complications, and they come see me to help fix it up. Virtually all of those patients come in with the expectation that I'm gonna fix it in one operation. But sometimes it's just not possible. At times I do split it up into two separate operations if I think that the patient is gonna have a better outcome by doing it that way. I know it's not the most convenient, but it works better in the right situation. So this is the outer lumen of saline is ruptured, but the inner silicone's intact. Well, the good news is that the inner silicone on both sides is intact. 
when that silicone, especially an old implant like that, when those would break, that silicone was a liquid and it would just ooze out like slime. It could create a massive, massive mess. And it's so sticky, it's like molasses. That is contrasted with saline in which the body basically absorbs it, which is a much easier thing and much cleaner for the doctor to fix up. This is about two millimeters thick. How do you make a breast out of that? This is like five millimeters thick. The magic number is 20. Ideally, when you're doing a breast lift, you want the tissue to be at least a centimeter and a half or two centimeters thick, which is essentially 20 millimeters, which is what he said. She's only two to five millimeters thick. That is super, super thin and not thick enough to be able to safely do a breast lift in an operation like this. Now the reason why the thickness is important is because the thickness will correlate to how much blood supply you have going through there. If it is super, super thin, there just isn't enough space there for a lot of blood vessels to run through it. This episode is brought to you by my skincare line, Yoon Beauty. Our products combine natural and organic ingredients with the latest in scientifically proven anti-aging components like vitamin C and retinol. So if you're looking for healthy and youthful skin without the unnecessary chemicals, this is the skincare line for you. Check them out at dryunonline.com and use the coupon code 20OFF to get $20 off your first order over $99. We'll put a link in the caption below. All right, back to the video. The best thing we can hope for is for contraction to occur yeah. where it all yeah. sucks up, gets thicker, and at least helps us out a little bit. I don't know if this is fixable. Whenever you take an implant out, the breast tissue will contract to an extent. It contracts more with better skin. So if you're younger, if that skin hasn't been stretched out, then it will contract much better than somebody who's a bit older and that skin has been super stretched out. Unfortunately, this patient is kind of on the latter side and that does not bode as well. So this could be a situation where cosmetically a second operation is gonna be a big, big challenge to get her looking pretty good. <laughs> Look, they're already shrinking up already, that's good. Good, they're... Then the pink? They're alive. They're alive. They're alive. We look at the color of the skin to determine whether there's enough blood supply. And if you look at her nipples and they look pink, that's a really good sign. If you look at them and they look purple, that's not a good sign. That means that there's venous congestion, meaning there's not enough blood supply to it and it's starting to have problems. If it looks gray or God forbid it looks black, now you're in deep, deep for the second phase of D surgery, I will make an incision through her old areolar scars and remove the built up inflammatory fluid. Then I'll put in smaller implants and perform a breast lift by removing all of her excess skin. I highly respect Dr. Dubrow's surgical talent and his decision making, but this is a surgery that I would go after a little bit differently. Instead of making the incision around the areola, I would make that incision underneath the breast. And the reason why is because you're worried about blood supply to the nipple. If you cut around the areola like he is, you're cutting through that blood supply that goes directly to the nipple that close to it. If you make the incision farther away, then the impact that that incision will make on cutting through those blood vessels is gonna be much, much less to the nipple than it otherwise would be if the scar is much closer. The tissue has sort of shrunk down and I don't have to close up the pocket very much and it will accommodate a much smaller implant. Well, this is good news because that big pocket of scar tissue that that huge implant used to be in without the implant has shrunk down and that can start occurring within about 48 hours after the operation. It may have shrunken down to the perfect size for placement of a smaller implant and then you do the lift with it at that time. Look, D, D is getting a normal sized and implant out. and she's still gonna have big breasts. Well, she wants to lead a normal life. One of the risks that they haven't talked about in this is when you have a history of capsular contracture, that excess scar tissue that can build up around the implant, that can happen with these new implants as well. And if you don't remove the scar tissue, then that scar tissue is gonna stay thick. So the question is, is how are the breasts gonna feel? Are they gonna feel hard or are they gonna feel soft and natural? So here's where the areola is really at risk, cutting away the blood supply. Okay, nipples, stay alive, baby. 
So now he's removing the excess skin from the breast as a way to tighten that breast up and to move the nipple up into a higher position. Performing this operation, a breast lift with implants has some of the highest risk in plastic surgery of getting sued because it's such a difficult surgery to perform and if that nipple dies, as a surgeon, as well as a patient, you're in big trouble. Considering what we started working with, we did some unconventional things, but I think we got her there. This is the type of operation as a surgeon that you perform and you think about it for literally the week before the operation. I have these surgeries that are complex, that are higher risk, and the night before surgery I'm thinking about it, the week before I'm thinking about it, because you know that if you're gonna do this operation that has a high degree of difficulty and a high degree of complications, you really have to be on your game to make sure that your patient does well at the end. I, don't, I didn't know how, but I thought I could figure it out, and so I thought it was worth the risk. And here we are on the and other I'm side so of it. I'm so blessed. Huh? Thank you so, so much. Let's see what you look like. Yeah, look at this. I mean, look at that. You look, you look so good. God, you look great. Give oh, us a hug. Awesome. Come on. Guys, huh? Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Huh? Thank you so much. Bless your hearts. That's great. Wow, that is a fantastic result. Kudos to Dr. Dubro for hitting this one out of the park. Well, this woman had massive implants due to her plastic surgeon giving them to her. But what about a woman who has massive implants just as big as these because she injects them herself? Well, take a peek at this video of a reaction that I do to a recent botched episode where a woman gives her implants basically the same size on her own. And if you've been enjoying my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And always remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and only consider actual plastic surgery as a last resort.